Well, hello everybody. I This is another video explaining how I grow lettuces indoor and what you need to get started with the indoor lettuce grow hydroponic system. I'm going to teach you how to grow lettuces without the use of air pumps, aerators, any kinds of electronics except for the lights. Of course, you will need some lights if you're not near a window that provides enough light for your plants. But other than that, it's pretty much an electricity-free way of growing lettuces indoors with the use of Crack Key Hydroponic. Now, this is what I start with is a 10-gallon modular stacker Sterilite tub. I like the black ones because these do not allow light to get into the roots, which is a very important. It also prevents algae growth on the inside of your tubs where your water reserve is held. So this, you can get these um, at Walmart, either at walmart.com if you're gonna get a bunch of them or usually they carry them in the stores. 10 gallon Sterilite modular stackers. They also have some that are four gallon and I like those as well. I grow some spinach and spinach seems to grow well with a smaller um, unit. Uh, even better than the larger units because you can get more in a smaller space with spinach. They don't grow quite as big as my big heads of romaine lettuce. So I will show you that as well. So here's what I did. I get those tubs and I drill out the three inch holes in the lid of the tubs. As you can see, here's, here's one of the, uh, the lids. And I use a drill gun with a three inch hole saw that I attach to it and it's very easy. You just um, drill those holes out, then you place the lid in the tubs. Um, you can easily then set your net pots in, which is where you will also place the clay pellet, hydrogen, and the rock wall cubes which hold your seeds for your lettuces. Let me explain one more thing you're going to need to get in addition to these tubs. With these net pots, you're going to want to make sure that you get the wide lip 3 inch net pots. You don't want to get something that's a narrow lip. You want something that's going to be nice and wide so that when you set it inside the holes, it's not going to push through with the weight of the plant. So you can find these on Amazon. They're very easy to find. Just Google wide inch net pots and you should be able to order them from Amazon. The other thing you're going to need, of course, as I mentioned, the hydrogen clay pellets. This is what they look like. And again, you Google that on Amazon, you can find them. Or any hydroponic retailer would have them, I would imagine. I get most of my stuff from Amazon. And then the other thing you're going to want to get is the rock wall cubes. Um, they usually come in sheets like this. And then I usually cut them down. I have nine holes in each of my tubs. So I cut them down in strips and, and cut them into individual um, cubes, one inch cubes. And then I usually will place them inside a bucket of water just for a couple seconds just to get them nice and, and wet when I go to pack them with the uh, hydrogen around them to hold them in place. And then you put your seed inside and it's very easy. Um, so let's just walk through the steps. Once you have your tubs all made, and you decide what shelving you need, want to put them on. As you can see, I just stack them right on top of each other um, in this shelving unit. Um, one tray on each shelf. And I place uh, my clamp lights off the side. And in these clamp lights, I just get daylight spectrum bulbs. I don't know if you can tell here. They're LEDs. CFLs also work. Whatever works in your budget. I like the LEDs because, of course, they use elect elect less electricity and they don't break so easily. They last longer. But whatever is your preference, um, they both work very well. I usually get something that's a 75 watt to 100 watt equivalent because you want to make sure it's bright enough that your plants will do well under those lights. I place them off the side so that the plants have plenty of room to grow between the top of the shelf and the uh, top of the tub. This is an 18 inch deep shelving unit. So between this shelf and that shelf above, you have 18 inches of clearance. Of course, your tub takes up about seven inches of that. So it gives you about a foot or a little less than a foot for growing space. It still gets a little cramped sometimes. That's why the lights are off the side. 
so that uh, I have room for the plants to grow up towards the top. Um, the other thing I want to show you is my four inch, I mean four gallon tray unit. Again, I use the same brand, the Sterilite Modular Stackers. And for the four gallons that I grow uh, a lot of my spinaches in, I like them because they're more compact. This is a smaller shelving unit and I didn't have as much room between the, uh, the um, dressers and things in my bedroom. So I chose a, a smaller shelving unit and I went with these little four gallons. And with the four gallon tubs, as you can see, you can put a two inch net pot and still grow quite a few um, smaller plants. You know, if I do grow lettuces in here, in fact, I do have one growing, they just tend to get big and I'll have to um, usually cut them out of here before they're fully grown just because it, it hits the top of this um, smaller shelving unit sooner than um, than that I'm able to let them grow to a maturity. But as you can see, things grow pretty well in these little four gallons. And this is a really nice setup for somebody who doesn't have a lot of space. I even set up one of these for my mom. I put a four gallon tub inside of a larger, um, again, modular stacker. They have many different sizes. And I took like one of the larger, uh, tall, I think it was 16 inches or 18 inches tall. Um, as you can see in the picture here, I think it might've been the bottom one. And on that one, I, I put the clamp lights off the top of the sides of that unit and then so for my mom I just put one of these little four gallon uh, Sarah light modular stackers inside one of the larger uh, tubs and then I just clamped the lights right off the top of that uh, tub down over top of the little four gallon unit inside and so she's able to grow lettuces without having a shelving unit just put the little tub wherever she wants to in the house and she can set up her little garden um, using one of these little four gallon modular stackers from Walmart so there's a number of different ways that you can set your system up but this is what I found worked best for me in my space using the shelving units just allows me to plant more plants and have more things growing uh, for feeding my family. So now next I want to talk about the nutrients you want to put inside of your units when you're growing your plants. A lot of, there's a lot of talk on, online and when you research about hydroponics people talk a lot about pH, make sure you have your pH for your vegetation between 6.5 and 7.5, really good for vegetables. But my well water comes in at a pH of 8.0, and I wondered if I had to adjust my pH down or if my plants would grow okay with a little bit higher pH. So I went ahead and did a test. I actually ran some of my units with lemon juice to lower the pH down to their recommended 7.0, 7.5, um, 6.5 range. And I discovered that those plants didn't grow any faster or any slower. Um, they seemed to have no, no difference between their growth and the ones that I did not adjust the pH at all. So I actually don't worry about pH anymore. Um, for my system, I just put the water in the tubs. I make sure that my water level is about a quarter inch from the bottom or no more than a quarter inch maybe you know an eighth inch in some of the tubs you know because you have this little beveled edge it kind of brings it up some of them are more like an eighth of an inch at the bottom but you just put a little bit of water at the bottom then you put your rockwell cube and you set your cube in so that it's just at the very bottom and then um you put the rock the hydrogen clay pellets all around them and then the water and then the plant, as it the seedling sprouts and the water evaporates or whatever, um, then it, as it goes down and the roots begin to drop from your plants, then there's enough air to water ratio for them to grow well without needing to use pumps or bubblers or, or running any, any equipment at all to add air to the water. Um, this works really well with my vegetable growing system um, with the, the lettuces and and things like that the herbs so I wanted to show you that it's really pretty easy to set this up 
Um, one more thing you should know is as far as the length of time that you should have the lights on for your plants. I would say no less than 12 hours a day. Um, I have tried experiments with 10 hours a day and I discovered uh, if you go much lower than, well certainly don't want to go lower than 10, but I would say keep it around 12 on the minimum side because your plants, actually the growth of your plants and the speed at which they develop is greatly impacted by how long you have your lights on your plants. Being that this is in our bedroom, we can't go much beyond 12 hours a day um, with the light, so I set everything up on a timer that kicks on and off. But in other areas of my house where I don't need to worry about whether I have lights on all the time, I can leave these on all, all the time, 24 hours a day, and I discovered that those lettuces grow much quicker. Um, in some cases, it's possible that they, you might even cut your time in half for them to grow to maturity. So just a, a little word of caution on your lights. Um, if you can afford longer time, um, more time on the lights is better if you want to have your plants grow um, quickly. Usually mine take about two months to grow to full term, but like I said, in, in that other room where we can leave the lights on, we usually leave them on about 16 hours or so, um, and, and you can go up to 24 hours. In some cases, I've heard some people can get their plants to term in 35 days. I haven't accomplished that because I usually don't leave it on all night. Um, have kids in the house and, all, and animals and all that stuff too. So, But um, usually the more time you give it, the quicker your plants will come to term. So I think that's about it. Oh, one more thing on the TDS. I will tell you with this nutrient, it's the best nutrient I have found for, for the lettuces. Um, TDS is total dissolved content. That's the nutrient ratio to the water ratio that you have. This Maxi Grow General Hydroponics Plant Food for Vig Vigorous Growth is phenomenal. It has everything you need um, to add to the water. You don't have to add any additional nutrients. And like I said, since you don't, usually I don't think you have to adjust pH. At least in my experience, I don't have to do that. So I don't even worry about pH adjusters. Um, and I just follow the instructions on the back. It tells you one to two teaspoons per gallon of fresh water. And for lettuces, they don't take as much nutrient as um, fruiting plants. Like my tomatoes, they'll take like the two teaspoons per gallon of fresh water. And with tomatoes, I use a totally different formula that supports the fruiting growth of my tomatoes. But for this um, vegetation growth, when you want green growth, and when you're talking about something small like lettuces or spinach or, or small herbs, um, one teaspoon per gallon of water is plenty. I've done a lot of experiments with my TDS meter and our well water being at 90 TDS and, and trying to get it to the right level. And I just pretty much just follow that one teaspoon per gallon of fresh water rule and everything grows just great um, with the lettuces. So to keep, save yourself a lot of time and effort trying to get the right meters for different things, I would recommend just get yourself this nutrient right here. Follow the directions to just do, you know, based on how many gallons. If you do the 10 gallons, put 6 gallons of water in is what it'll take. If it's 4 gallons, you're going to put somewhere around 2.5, 3 gallons in the 4-gallon tubs. And just follow the directions. Um, for 6 gallons, you're going to do, you're going to use their little measuring scoop that they have in here. That shows the teaspoon on the one side, tablespoon on the other. It'll only take 2 tablespoons per 10-gallon tray. And that will provide enough nutrients for your plant to grow to term, to the full two month term um, with lettuces without having to add additional nutrients. Here's another thing that people will tell you. They'll tell you that you have to change your water reserve every week or every two weeks. And I'm going to tell you, I never change my water reserve except for when my plant is at full term. So with my lettuces, I put the nutrients in the water once. I don't mess with it until they're all grown and I get full, beautiful looking heads of lettuce and without having to mess with readjusting nutrients or anything during that time. And if you start the water level where I recommend that quarter inch, you will still have probably about an inch of water in the bottom of your trays even when your plants are full term because it's just enough water for them to grow to the full size that you need without adding additional water in most cases. Now I've had a few exceptions where something doesn't sprout in, as quickly, some of the seeds, and sometimes I'll have to add a little bit more water because that plant's taking longer to take off and you know that does happen occasionally but most of the time I get my trays all set up, I put my nutrients in here 
and I plant my seeds and we're good to go. And, uh, and I don't have to worry about it with my timers and the lights and everything going. I don't have to worry about it until the plants are ready to harvest. All right, so that's all for now, guys, and uh, hope you have a good time gardening.